only takes one character that is typed wrong, it could potentially crash the whole field system. So everything is kind of a very well-timed orchestra. Pretty much not to just show what the feature is, but it's also to show why the feature matters. It's hands down the most modern timesheets out there. We've had customers come to us and say, hey, we need this feature. The reason why they need this feature is because their solutions aren't doing the job. A lot of the time, you know, these, these other solutions, they work as a single product, but when you're trying to sort of use it day to day, seamlessly integrated with what you're doing, it becomes very, very, very clunky and inefficient. So we basically break down what people like about every other solution, um, break down it from a technical perspective and from a, a customer experience perspective, um, and then pretty much then formulate our own thesis on what we think the feature should be like based on the customer feedback, based on our experience over the years, and try to come up with something that's completely unique um, and fully integrated within field. So no matter what you do, this feature is gonna work throughout it and it can run itself, which is a big part of it because if we just build another feature that takes you more time, then um, you know, we sort of defeat the purpose of, of software. We're big fans of Figma. Figma is a great piece of software that allows us to build everything pixel perfect, which then transfers over into the app. I know some people use Photoshop or Sketch in the past, but everything that you see on field today at some stage was built in Figma. Everything is, is vectored pixel perfect before it's then pushed into, into development. So the first step, Obviously we've taken research of what's available currently um, from a UI UX perspective, from, a, from an automation perspective, from a seamless perspective in terms of does the feature seamlessly interact with other parts of the system and can it work autonomously with just one form of input, not multiple people having to sort of babysit the feature. So we go through, sort of take screenshots of what we like, um, other things that customers maybe are using now to fill the void and say, hey, this is where we're coming from. This is where we want to go to. Um, so there's a ton of research in this scenario, but you know, this is something where, I mean, I've used timesheets personally with, with other jobs when I was a lot younger, like I know how it works. So we did a little bit of research and then it's, then we sort of the ideas start to flow very, very quickly. And then when we combine it with what we already have, very quickly we're able to come up with some kind of ingenious stuff that we can add into this feature. So this is a desktop view. Then we gotta go, okay, well, how does it look on mobile? How does it work on tablet? So this is still in progress here, but I'm trying to design it for all layouts. So no matter what, it's gonna be laid out perfectly. Then of course there's settings. So uh, we have to update that as well. So you might wanna have timesheets on and off. This is a simple on and off button. Then in the worker profile, so you can quickly see what's going on, you log into the worker profile, um, timesheets and hourly rate, that's where you'd set it here. So these are all the things we think about. That is the design process. And, and along the way, we're gonna miss things. We try, we try to think of everything, but along the way, we're gonna miss things, and it means that throughout the process, it's gonna come back to design, because as soon as you start to code it, um, as you're coding it, that pops up new possibilities that you maybe haven't thought about. And that happens all the time. And sometimes it means a full redesign of everything because we need to put a certain button in a certain place and that upsets the design everywhere. So it means that this could go through design 
multiple, multiple times, but ideally not, we're getting pretty good at this, um, but that's, that's all part of the process and building a, a game-changing feature that everyone loves. Why, if you're using a word twice, then it shouldn't be there. Yeah, it, yeah, it should have a shouldn't header be there. for the empty state. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah that's a good point. Yeah. Because you'll still need to show the ability to add one, even if... You can do it just like how you do time track, you can have breaks and have the total of the breaks right there too. Which is similar to I think this makes like... Does this make the back end y'all like more clear? Yeah. Like it's basically, that's basically Over the years, the we've worked with a lot of UI UX people and someone's done an amazing job, sometimes not so good of a job. The UI UX is one of the most critical parts of tech because if it doesn't look good and it doesn't flow right, it's gonna fail no matter how technically advanced it is. And so, you know, I don't design every feature. Some features are, are sort of handled by the team um, and I, I, I don't, I'm not involved in that at all. Um, but for the biggest stuff, you know, the online booking page, for example, a customer portal, most of you probably don't know this, but that used to be a one page, right? That used to literally be a one pager. And that was the very, one of the very, very first versions of that. And then we evolved that into a full app. Uh, which everyone loves today. So every single pixel of that was designed initially by me. Um, and that was a big, big, big design process. Even the worker app, we did an update last year. Every pixel as well was highly considered. So UI UX is so critical that anyone can design anything, but if they don't understand the business knowledge and they don't understand the software well enough, you're just gonna have development bottlenecks all day. Uh, and it just takes a long time to get that right. So I still really love doing that. I would say most of my day is the UI UX because it's such a critical part of the business and I'm still learning and evolving and, and you know, every day reading how to, how to design better UI UX. I think out of my day, I would spend probably the most time on UI UX amongst everything else you know, in between meetings, et cetera, because that's probably where I can make the most impact. By taking on something like timesheets, it seems really simple, like, oh, you clock in, you clock out, and there's a timesheet, you review it, you have pay, you think about it and you look about it, you put it on paper and it seems like it's gonna be, oh, you know, a few hundred lines of code. Something like this might end up being 20,000 lines of code. That's just one of those things, you know, you think it might take a week or two and then it ends up taking a lot longer. And that's just kind of how it goes at field when you're trying to make the best features you can. Coding is very complicated. So what we're doing now is we're breaking down the task into basically front-end tasks, back-end tasks, database tasks. So, you know, the front-end, we need to replicate the design, which is then gonna be built in HTML and CSS. And then on the back-end, we're gonna build out the API and connect that to the database as well. There's gonna be multiple developers working on this project. And, you know, for those out there that say, oh, you know, AI will be able to build it. AI helps us, but AI doesn't understand the intricate connections between all the different parts of fields. So AI will be able to build it a little bit, but it only takes one character that is typed wrong and it could potentially crash the whole field system. So once the developers have finished the first draft, it'll go back to me. It'll then start to be tested by other developers. We'll pass it to the onboarding team. They'll be able to test it and give their feedback in a beta testing environment, which will then uncover feedback where we'll need to potentially go back to design. All the developers will be able to quickly work on the fly to kind of solve problems. And then they're very good at that. Once 
the development team is happy and once the sales team is happy and the onboarding team is happy and I'm happy, it'll be passed over to the marketing team. Normally we don't specify what's new. Yeah. So it would be nice to say now with timesheets, but yeah, so What'd you just do? Just send it for review. So the app is out now? Or the... Uh, we just need to wait for the approval. And that means timesheets yeah. is out too? And that means timesheets is out. So when a new feature like timesheets goes out, there's a lot of work that happens before that in order to get out on time and make sure that it's communicated properly to every department. So a lot of what I do is making sure that the development team has given me the exact date and time of when things are going to be released and making sure that all the work beforehand, such as like help guides, videos, training of our team, is there ready to go for that moment once the feature is released. Prior to that release, we have to update our own app. Um, that goes through an approval process with Apple and Google, but we also have to update every single branded app that we have as well, which takes time. So that there has to make sure that we are factoring that into the release and get that out at the perfect time so that people can use the feature right away. So everything is kind of like a very well-timed orchestra because if one department hasn't got the information that they need to release the feature, there's a flow-on effect eventually to our clients. So one main component as well as making sure that the support team is working with the marketing team seamlessly, also our product launches. So we have to put carousels online um, as well as within the product as well. So we work hand in hand with them, but also the sales team too. So we've got to train the sales team, teach the sales team of why this feature is beneficial, where it lives, how does it work, so that they can answer questions as well. So it's all very delicately balanced. I think a part that people don't realize as well is that every feature and update that we build does often come from customer feedback. When customers message in um, and say, hey, we'd like this, or we're used to this, or this improvement would be great, that does actually get listened to by us. What we do to communicate that back to our clients is we do provide a monthly email update, banners within accounts, and also online as well, to inform users of those new updates and how they can benefit from them. Our process for marketing uh, features like timesheets vary from feature to feature just because some are complicated, some are very simple. But one of the things that I like to do in that process is to brain dump. Um, and this allows us to come up with a plan for how we're gonna go on about the campaign. So the goal to our marketing approach is pretty much not to just show what the feature is, but it's also to show why the feature matters. Once the marketing team comes up with one idea, we tend to move into building content for it. It's usually a four-stage process, but like I said, each feature is different. The first process would be either to launch a teaser video for the feature and then come up with a static graphic that we'd post on our socials. The next thing would be to start pre-production for a commercial style video and then, you know, film that commercial, which takes quite a bit of time. So once the creative side of things um, is locked in, um, we like to build assets that will support the sales team. Specifically, the one asset that is super important is the how-to videos, um, just because once we launch a video, we'll get a lot of people asking our sales guys or just our team in general how to use the features um, and that's where the how-to video comes in and just saves everyone else time, you know.
Getting a first look at a feature is always very exciting. Um, sometimes it can be overwhelming, but the process that we take, um, it's very simple, right? Get your hands on it, get your hands dirty, and the more you mess around with it, the easier it is. Um, and right now with timesheets, it's, it's cleaner than ever. I mean, I think this version of timesheets is worth talking about because um, one, we have just had so many people asking us about it, right? We've always been able to track um, job time, but now having clock in, clock out, it really is next level. And then two, it's hands down the most modern timesheets out there. So my process, when I'm explaining this to new customers, it's really simple. We hop on a, a video call and I'll take you through the software. I'll run you through it. It's, it's really as simple as really clocking in, clocking out. But what's really nice about Field and, and the little cherry on top is we actually give you how-to videos. So now you can always go back, reference these videos and be an absolute pro.